Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in to another episode of Nerd Up. This week, I got Dalton Anthony. Yo. Ace of Grey. Yes. And I'm your host, Jesse Kimball. All right. Uh, so we got uh, quite a bit of stuff to get through, particularly with uh, D23 first. Um, so much D23. <laughs> so much D23. A, uh, just a, a little teaser from the pre-show. Uh, what, w- what was Cody's answer, Dalton? Oh, I was going to wait until they, they'd had to listen to halfway through the show. Uh, he does not hate him. It's actually a very long uh, conversation about how he really likes him. And the people that he surrounded himself with weren't the best. And that's kind of why the situation <laughs> happened. <laughs> Was that the best answer I could give you? I'll read that, the actual answer later. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that'll work. So teaser for the pre-show. If you want to know what we're talking about, patreon.com slash podzilla1985, one dollar gets you access to all of the pre-shows and it's yeah just yeah, us yeah. kind of like getting it, warmed up on the microphone so, and uh you know so he doing doesn't hate test. him he doesn't hate him at all and he's watched ghostbusters it's really nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it, like, very important it's not one dollar per pre-show it's nope. you know one dollar and you get the entire month's yeah, worth of... one dollar per month on patreon.com and yeah. you get like every pre-show we post if you're a, a pz85 regular you know we do four shows a week which means four pre-shows a week with extra funny, uncensored content. I don't even want... It's like... That's like pennies on the dollar of pre-shows. <laughs> and they're not even, like, specific to that show. So, like, if you only listen to Nerd Up and you never listen to Pro Wrestling Unscripted, you can listen to the pre-show from before PWU, but it won't be wrestling-related. No. no. Necessarily. We like, there's about- probably some overlap, I'm sure, because yeah. that's just what we talk about when we're just talking. Yeah. Jesse can attest to that. Can. We talked about can the confirm. Colts for like 20 minutes today. <laughs> and a very special episode yeah. of the pre-show. <laughs> Boy, was it. Yeah. All right. I say uh, listen to it. You need to give us a dollar for that. It's good stuff. So yeah, and like I said, uh, it's, it's, it's a dollar for the entire month of pre-shows. Yeah. Uh, and you get access to all the previous pre-shows. There's a lot of content you can go back and uh, digest. There's a lot of horrendous stuff Shane and I have said on these pre-shows that are <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> all right, so uh, moving on with the actual show because, again, a lot of stuff to talk about. And we'll see if we get through movies and TV. Uh, so f- to start with, Bill and Ted has wrapped filming. Uh, and we have a release date for August 21st, August 21st, 2020. Boy, getting through words is hard right now. You did it. I, I made it through. You I made it through it. that first one. Let's see if I can get through the rest. Uh, so yeah, Bill and Ted, wrapping filming. Yes, yes, fantastic. Did you see the cast photo? Or yes. well, not even the cast photo, but the, like the set photo? I have not. Yeah. They did a side-by-side of it was like everybody that they could get working on the movie, like normal picture, and then they did the the uh, Wild Stallions pose. <laughs> I'm on it. And it was, it's go to the uh, Bill and Ted Twitter account. And yeah, that'll be, be where it's posted. Uh, but yeah. I'm super excited. Like this, the turnaround from because there have been rumors about this movie for forever of mm-hmm. people wanting to get it done and like the fans want it. I wanted it for so long. So going it from okay, it's officially happening to next year. Yeah, score. Like I am on board, and the fact that they're, like they're already done filming that seems crazy, but I'm here for it. I'm really excited. Yeah, I. I can't believe they're done filming already. Like, holy crap. Yeah. Because they just announced filming it. Like, It feels like they just announced filming it like a month ago. Yeah. I know it was longer than that, but mm-hmm. it wasn't much longer than yeah, that. Yeah, it, it was... It's insanity. It's, it's an insane turnaround, which, yeah. you know, good on them. Mm-hmm. Even if this isn't like some, you know, AAA giant blockbuster. Like, if this is... Because this is the kind of movie that kind of lends itself to being a smaller production, yeah. really. So I guess that makes more sense, but I don't know. I, I just... Just give it to me. Like... I mean, in fairness, like back in the '80s, like that was uh, some some pretty epic CG. Well, yeah, but <laughs> they can keep that level of quality, which I kind of hope they do. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely need some like '80s throwback stuff, mm-hmm. uh, which right now, like that is the hottest thing going. Also, did you see? Uh, did you see um, George Carlin's daughter Mm-mm. got cast in it? Oh no, I didn't. That's so awesome. She posted like a really touching thing. That's fantastic. Yeah. They uh, they hired wounded warriors as extras in Bill and Ted Three, yeah, the, the best humans <laughs> They're ever. Pretty great. All right, like uh, I love these movies, and now I'm go. I I don't care if this movie's a dumpster fire. I'm gonna go support it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, and it won't be a dumpster fire. Like it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, no, because the people who made this movie like care about the franchise. Yeah, this and is- like I feel, and I honestly feel like Alex Winters and Keanu Reeves would not have. Signed on to on do it. this if it was going to be some like cheap, and it's and it would it couldn't even be a huge like a quick like a big cash in because no. like the Bill and Ted like the Bill and Ted movies are not like a they're they're cult classics yeah but it's not like some kind of franchise that you can no. just you know put a it's not Transformers it's like whatever we put out it's going to make money 
Yeah, no, this is this is one of those things where it's got to be good or they're not going to put their names to it. You're absolutely right. They would have no reason to just like, you want to you just make some cash real quick? Throw out a Bill and Ted 3? No, that ain't them. Uh, so now a sequel that I'm not excited about. Matrix 4 has been announced with Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss reprising their roles. Uh, weird choice to skip 2 and 3. <laughs> uh, I'm 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 not really. Uh, they, they went Apple about it. Just don't worry, baby. Just it's gonna be good. <laughs> they just went Apple about it. Is it? Because that's the thing. Is like we. So this got announced on the same day as another story that we're gonna get to. Uh, that we did talk about Shannon and I on the Tuesday show. Oh yeah. Um, but like we, this didn't get mentioned. We didn't bring this one up. Uh-huh. And it's that thing of like everybody being so excited that, and it's just like, but why? Like, are we remembering how this franchise went, like, wildly differently? Like, is this a Mandela effect thing where it's like, no, two and three were actually great. No, they were bad. I'm I, just going to think that four, four is good because I like the Matrix. See, but here's the thing. Of, I like, love the first Matrix. They're also only do. They're also, it's only going to be one of the Wachowskis. Huh. Like, it's not both. That maybe I hadn't heard. Maybe it'll be the Townsend let me, one. Let me see if I can double, let me see if I can uh, double check that, but. Because I, I remember, because I, I remember the press release coming out and only naming one of the sisters. Huh. And uh, I guess uh, since, like, while Ace was looking that up, th- this was this was pretty big news. Uh, I got a lot of people didn't know it um, that that I that I have found. Carrie Ann Moss was also Jerry Hogarth. Yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> the Marvel Some, series. Someone posted a picture on Reddit of like these two haven't aged a day, and it was a picture of Neo and Trinity, and then like a recent picture of Keanu and, and her. And I was like, "Holy, S! That's <laughs> that's that's, that's Jerry, Jerry Hogarth. What? And yeah, they even have the sh- same haircut. <laughs> yeah, no, they, it's it is literally just a I'm stupid. Like, there's I can't believe. But it I wasn't didn't. just you. Like after that, you know, we talked to uh, Trevor about it. Trevor did. Like, yeah, it blew Trevor. That made mind. me feel better. That made me feel uh, better. Then I, I started looking around and saw on the internet, and, like apparently blew a lot of people's minds. They were the same person. And I was like. Really, guys? I thought I thought, the, I thought I thought Trinity from the Matrix just like went to the Matrix. Also, like, I thought she just vanished. <laughs> I'm really really bummed that you did find that out because I was absolutely gonna make some kind of joke mm-hmm. about Jerry Hogarth on the on the show when I was talking about the Matrix Four, mm-hmm. and then you told me that like it would have been so great for me to make that joke, and you just give me that look of like what are you talking? The and glass then like shatter. Yeah, basically move from like that like what are you talking about to like the realization of. Oh my of, like, god! <laughs> and yeah. uh... The Warner Brothers picture. This is from Screen Rant. Warner Brothers Pictures is officially moving forward with The Matrix Four, with Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss star, uh, starring, and Lana Wachowski directing. Lana, Lena. I don't. I'm not sure how they how she pronounces it. Um, yeah, but so only one of the Wachowskis, which I don't know if that's significant or not, but kind of feels like it is. Yeah, because they're usually a unit. They very typically are. Uh, so I'm really not. Maybe they can only afford one of them. Uh, I I got nothing. Yeah, I don't know. Either way, I'm like I'm not excited. <laughs> like I'm just I'm like I, I'm just I'm I'm not like this is the I haven't is because we, we were talking about it in our messages and Dalton's just making faces. At this I want to know how he thinks the contract works. <laughs> Dalton, like they could only afford one of them. Like no, that's Dalton's just having a lot of fun dwelling on that joke. <laughs> <laughs> but they the, could uh, only get one. Like, <laughs> sorry, we only had enough money for one of you. Uh. Can you both talk it out though? Like we're only paying just one of you. Yeah, just, just split it. Because, uh, like you said, you haven't Jesus mentioned Christ. you haven't seen the sequels since they came out in theaters. I saw the sequels on VHS. I'm pretty sure. Maybe it was uh, DVD. I don't remember. I mean, like I they, remember watching I, it. I was at my friend's Ryan's house when we watched it, and I remember watching it being like, "What?" Because I know DVDs were getting popular when the the sequels came out. Okay. I remember I wore out the VHS for the first Matrix mm-hmm. and then got it on DVD. But because the first one is great, the first was a phenomenal movie. And then like I, there was someone on, there was a Twitter thread of a movie critic like talking about going to the premiere of the energy and the buzz, the electricity in the room in the theater of the movie about to start, and then the movie starts and feeling. Just ha- like feeling a theater full of people, the air coming out of the room of just disappointment and confusion and sadness and anger. That sound. And then everybody leaving the theater just like, what <laughs> just <laughs> happened? He just explained the Last Jedi experience for me. <laughs> 
I like my theater and myself. Maybe it was just because it was me. Like I was hyped about the Last Jedi, like beginning end. I loved that movie, mm. but we're not going to get into that on this show. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah. We got news though. <laughs> we do. We do <laughs> a lot of news. Uh, so yeah, Matrix Four is announced. If you're excited about it, I'm, I'm glad for you. I no, um, if, like, and I'm I'm not saying this in like a crappy way. Like I'm not trying to be insulting. If you are, please. I know we say this every time, but like, go to go to our Facebook, go to our Twitter, send us an email, something. Like, I want to know why. Like, is it because you're hoping that they're going to move past the the sequels? Did you like the sequels? Like, yeah. I, I want. Do you actively like get angry every time Jesse makes the bit that they didn't exist? Yeah, like I, I want to <laughs> like, especially if you disagree with us. Like, I want to know. I want to have those conversations. Right. Like, no one's gonna crap on you for 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 liking a thing. Because I don't personally know anyone that likes those movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I know someone that didn't get that I was making a bit uh, when I made the joke of like, wait, sequel? They never made a sequel to The Matrix. Uh, she was like flabbergasted. Like, I know something about movies that Jesse doesn't. She was so <laughs> happy. She was. And then I was like, all right, no, I can't keep going with this. No, I know their movies. They're terrible. Uh, she got so mad. Like, um, there's only four seasons of Dexter. <laughs> so, yeah, moving on, though, uh, a movie that I, I really want to get hyped about, James Gunn's Suicide Squad. Uh, Nathan Fillion was announced for a role. We don't know who. An undisclosed an role. An undisco- undisclosed role in the Suicide Squad. Uh, the headline that I saw this in kind of made me angry, uh, just irrationally. <laughs> uh, because the headline was, Nathan Fillion, star of The Rookie, announced to uh, or announced for James Gunn's Suicide Squad. And I was like, The Rookie? That's what you're pulling from, like, <laughs> his massive career. catalog mm-hmm. of, like, his career of phenomenal it, projects. You you went with The Rookie? In fairness, it is the yeah. most recent. Like, it's the it's the current thing. Like, is that show still going? Yes. Okay, so, uh, I mean. I think it's about, like, I think season two is about to start airing, I Okay. Think. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, like, that's why. But, but, I, but I get it, yeah. Like, yeah, no, I'm just sitting there like, but really, though? What, what and even, even in that universe where, like, all right, it's a superhero movie. Oh, the star of Firefly, Nathan Fillion, is going to be he's, is signed on with Suicide Squad. But here's and the thing: in Trevor, Firefly, I need Trevor to understand that I I enjoy the property Firefly. Like it's it's like I'm not meaning this insultingly in any way, but more people know him from the Rookie than Firefly. Oh yeah, yeah. especially I'm just the, with what this is like now. If it was like a like another show or something like that, mm-hmm. or like a movie that wasn't a superhero mm-hmm. movie, yes, the Rookie's Nathan Fillion. I get that. It's cool. It's just a weird one where it's like, but I get it too. Like, but also, literally it. everyone who's seen Firefly like knows he was in Firefly. Like that's it's. And those are the just, people that are like me that are like, really, you picked the rookie? Like I get not picking, especially because Firefly is what don't, don't, over, over ten, fifteen years yeah. old at this yeah. point. Uh, I get that, <laughs> <laughs> and I get that. Like despite the extreme, uh, the the very fervent following. That it has, like, not everybody has seen Firefly. Vocal minority. Uh, extremely vocal minority. All right, screw it. Dr. Horrible Singalong blog star Nathan Fillion. Let's there just go, go further back. Even less uh, people. <laughs> and I love that movie. Viewer. <laughs> Same. Uh, what if... Because, like, the way that they're wording this and they're kind of being cagey of who he's playing, like, what if he's just Batman? <gasps> I never knew I wanted Nathan Fillion as Batman until right now. Yeah, like three <laughs> seconds ago, I'm yeah. on board. I, oh no, I like I don't think I honestly like I don't think he'd be a good Batman. No, nah, I think he'd be a phenomenal I think Batman. He'd be great. Uh, he's too quippy. Ama- he's he'd, too quippy. He'd be a great Bruce Wayne. Yeah. He would be a great Bruce Wayne, yeah. and I think but he, he could, would not be a good Batman. I think he could tone it down for Batman. He's done serious in the no, past. No, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah like, Doctor like, Horrible sing along blog. <laughs> Uh, but like, but no, there's just like, cause the way they're like, he's in an undisclosed role, like more than likely he's going to be like, of he's going to be one of the Suicide Squad people Slipknot. or even like the, uh, like a guard or something like that. Like I, I get the feeling that this isn't a or major. Or he could be, uh, okay, what's, who's the captain? Um, Rick Flag. Rick Flag. I can oh see God. Him. I can see that. I can that see would be way better. But I, but I also don't think that he's going to be like a major part of the movie. I think this is just kind of like a. Or if it is, it's going to be like one of those, deal. like, uh, it's it's a role they want to blow everybody away with. Yeah, which Batman would do it. Batman would do it. All right, uh, moving past that, we got a little bit more DC news here. Ezra Miller has gone on and in an interview said that the Flash movie is still absolutely moving forward and he is absolutely still on board for it. Yay. Okay, uh, my favorite take on this is from Twitter, and I need you to read that headline one more time for me. Uh, sorry, Ezra Miller says the Flash movie is still moving forward. Narrator, it wasn't. <laughs> I hate you. I also liked my GIF response. Just the, sure, sure Jan. Jan. 
because <laughs> uh, it's it's i granted uh i know it was up in the air with the contract negotiations like his, mm-hmm. his timed contract for the several movies he was supposed to be in is almost out before the first one hit he was the opposite of andrew luck <laughs> before before the first he, one was made yeah started being made he uh, wanted to work and they wouldn't let him mm-hmm. uh yeah so i guess that like at least the contract stuff then is is fixed like he's like no i'll, I'll at least do the movie uh it, it's <clears throat> It's whatever. It's not happening. Like just if you, it's gonna happen. I know you guys want it to happen. It's I think not it's just happening. me. Actually, I think it's just me. Oh no, yeah, because I was like, I wasn't a huge, I wasn't a huge fan of him. As I didn't like you. what they did with the character of Barry Allen. I didn't essentially, either. especially uh, like it, it didn't help that we had Grant Gustin like to compare it to. Oh. Like, uh, that, yeah, that, that did not fair. help Ezra. That did not do Ezra Miller any favors. Which like I'm starting to realize, having fallen so far behind on on the Flash comics, that I just I've recently quit pulling them. Uh, it's like, oh no, I think Grant Gustin is my favorite version of Barry Allen. And that is not a canonical, like, comic accurate version of Barry no. Allen. <laughs> and I was not aware of that reading, because I'm reading the comics, and I'm very confused in a lot of stuff, but Rebirth did a good enough job of, like, starting you up. kind of starting me back up, but... Yeah, no, Barry Allen is very different from Grant Gustin. Very different. Uh, that that Barry, like, it's, it's the same thing with the Arrow. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a very, very different take yeah. on the Arrow. Comic book uh, Arrow was way cooler. Uh, he was basically just Bruce Wayne all the time, like just constantly. Yeah. Like, no, he was he was Bruce Wayne if Bruce Wayne was like Barry Sanders. Because 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 Ollie like hates rich people. Yeah. Except he is a billionaire. Yeah. And all of his books are about like eating the rich. Yeah. Which I yeah. mean, like, cool, go for it. Because it's it's the Human hard Robin like Hood angle. Yeah. Like that's that's what it's supposed to be. Except it's also like simultaneously like, but if Robin Hood was a gajillionaire. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's it's very, very different. But regardless, mm-hmm. moving moving on here, that Ezra Miller, like I'm sorry, Ezra, your movie's not happening. It's gonna I happen. Just, I will believe it when I'm in the theater watching it because I will be in the theater watching it. Oh yeah. But And that's 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 And the by o- the time you've watched it, <laughs> I've bought three tickets. Yeah. <laughs> For the same show, <laughs> which is good because no, like do that. That way, I can have like just extra seats. No seats, like no one on the other side of me. Like I have my little area I can spread <laughs> out. And... Yeah. All right. So Sony and Disney. This is moving on to some some real bummer news here. Mm-hmm. Sony and Disney unable to reach a deal on Spider Man. Mm-hmm. So it's looking I mean, like. Well, we have we have more information than we did on Tuesday because Tuesday's when the story broke. Yes. And yeah. everyone was just like Sony. What are you doing? Like, F you, Sony. You're the worst. Blah, 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 blah. Whereas now, we're kind of like, we have more of an understanding of like, oh, no. Hey, Disney. Maybe back up on this one. Because basically, it was... So here, here's uh, my understanding. And Asa can update me if there's something I missed. Yeah, help me uh, out here. So we had a... Uh, like, what was the original deal that Sony and Disney had. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sony bankrolls the entire project. Mm-hmm. And then Disney makes 5% after, like... Of the profit, like after uh, opening day dollar or something like that was yeah, like it's a, a it's first dollar or something like it was some weird term that I didn't fully understand. But Disney got a chunk of money from the yeah, because it was like it was five maybe it was like five percent of opening weekend sales yeah, or something some, like that yeah. Uh, basically, like Disney was guaranteed to get money out of it. Like yeah. they they were getting five percent of whatever. Which if you look at how much Homecoming and Far From Home made, uh, like they got a significant chunk of money. But compared to what those movies earned, mm-hmm. they got scraps. Right. Uh, and obviously, the the other benefit to the deal is that they were able to use Tom Holland, Spider Man, in their in the rest of the movies. Yeah. So that was cool. And then um, Sony got the benefit of being able to make a Spider Man, a solo Spider Man film within the bigger MCU. Right. So uh, they got to they got a little bit of that playground to work with, and then yeah, Marvel got to use Spider Man in the you know, Avengers and in Captain America and things like yeah. that. Because basically Sony just made all of this money for effectively, like, they gave they gave Kevin Feige uh, several million dollars, and then they earned tens, like, hundreds of millions of dollars. A billion. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, off of off of these movies, because, <laughs> like, Sony did no work. Like, they did no writing, they did not, they bankrolled it, but they themselves... See, I, think so- I think Sony made, like, it was a Sony film, but, like, Kevin Feige... Kevin Feige produced it. Yeah. Like Kevin Feige was all over. Sony didn't do anything. They they just put the they gave Kevin Feige the money. Okay. Uh, that was that's my understanding of the deal. And moving forward, Disney was like, we just want to do straight fifty fifty. Uh, we want to do straight down the middle. Like we cover half of and, costs, we cover half of everything else, and we earn half the money. And that and that is the that was what came out recently. Yes. Of how that like that was the, what Disney's requesting. Which, when you look at it, back off Disney. Like. 
Yeah, you, one... you, you, you already got, you have, what was it, five movies that have made a billion dollars this year alone? Yeah. And so, and, and pitch I think it, it's up and, to six now, because I, I think to... that uh, Lion, King. Lion King crossed a billion. Yeah. So it was something, we did, a, we talked about that story, yeah. I just don't remember the exact number. But it's, so look at this from Sony's perspective. And I'm talking, like, and I am the person at the table now who, like, and it was the same thing on Tuesday with Shannon of, like, I don't think the Raimi movies held up, like, hold up as well. No. Uh, no, they don't. That's surprising from, anyway, moving on. Uh, I, like, so, I, I don't like Sony, uh, especially what they do with live-action Spider-Man. Yeah. So, like, I don't want them to keep him at all. I want Disney to have the, the action figure to play with. Like, do that, yeah. especially after Far From Home. But look at it from Sony's perspective of, okay, we're paying... We paid. Look up the 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 budget for Far From Home. Oh, real quick. Uh, I don't have the budget. I have the box office numbers. That's not what I'm. Oh, oh I have the budget. Oh, there you go. Sweet. Uh, which one do you want to know? The budget, the budget for Far From Home. The budget for Far From Home. One hundred and sixty million. So they spent one hundred and sixty million dollars, and got a billion dollars back. Yeah. Yes. Why, in the world, and they potentially paid Disney five percent of that billion. Why in the world would they agree to spend eighty million dollars to make five hundred thousand dollars? Five hundred million. Five hundred. Yeah, sorry, five hundred million dollars. <laughs> like that is a terrible deal for them. No, it's it's a terrible deal uh, in contrast to what they were getting before. Yes. right. It's still a phenomenal deal. Yeah, because here's the thing. Um, and I'm looking at box office now because, like, mm-hmm. the point I wanted to get across why Sony, like, really. Um, only one movie that uh, they did mm-hmm. that Sony did by themselves made more money than um, Homecoming, mm-hmm. and that was Spider-Man Three, and it only beat it by ten million box office worldwide. Hmm. That was the only one that beat it mm-hmm. out of five movies. Right. Um, Far from Home did a billion. Right. So what I'm getting at, and by the way. The budget for the I'm going th- through the Raimi movies right now. Mm-hmm. The budget in order from one to three: one thirty nine million, two hundred million, two hundred fifty eight million. Those mm-hmm. were the budgets for those movies in order. The Mark Webb movies, uh, which was amazing, two hundred thirty million, two hundred fifty million budget. Mm-hmm. One hundred seventy five million was Homecoming. One hundred sixty was Far From Home. That blows my mind. Yeah. Blows my mind completely. Now, unless it costs <laughs> less money to make Far From Home. <laughs> Then <laughs> Spider Man two and three. Now, and this could I, I and it's Wikipedia, and I'm looking at it yeah. like, I, like so. But these are the numbers I have in front of me right now that mm-hmm. I'm using. And if I'm wrong, I'm very sorry. What I'm getting at is they did none of the work. Yeah, that's like, the real important thing. Like, and, uh, and like, yes, you're absolutely right. Mm-hmm. They spent a hun- like they made a billion dollars and only spent 160. Right, million. and that five percent of like that possibly that five percent was only what earned on opening weekend. Yeah, so like. All right, let's be let's be a little liberal with what they got taken away. Mm-hmm. They made nine hundred million, right? And they only spent one hundred and sixty million. So they'd be like, "Yes, you're right. The deal is horrible in that aspect, mm-hmm. but they did none of the work." And because um, I mean, that, that would be one of those things. Like, and yeah, like I get what Ace is talking see, it's about. The, it's, the, 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 it's the comparative deal, like mm-hmm. moving from the deal they have currently, the five percent yes. to the fifty fifty. Yeah, no, that is awful for Sony. Because if, if your job came to you tomorrow and said, hey, this is the contract that you've had and that you're expecting going forward, yeah. we're going to alter that to where now uh, double birds just in your face. Yeah, well, because I think well, Homecoming was the last movie that in the, they in the, con- in the contract. In the, yeah. So basically, they approached them like their contract was up, mm-hmm. and they're like, "All right, so we just showed you that your investment will be returned mm-hmm. in by a significant margin. We want a better chunk of that cash, though, and uh, don't worry, we're going to put in on it, so you won't have to up upfront as much cash. But yeah, we're going to go halvesies with you whole way, and we'll go halvesies on the way out. Because here's a, and like the difference of it is, and I get why it makes sense for Disney. Like oh, I, that's yeah. not what I'm saying. Yeah. What no. I'm saying is. I don't think Sony's the bad guy here for saying no. And see, I think Sony's the bad guy for not saying anything. I, I do think Sony is the bad guy for saying no. Like, they were getting a steal at the deal they had before. Mm-hmm. Now they're being offered a fair, like, moving, like, because their contract, yeah, more than fair. Yeah. Way more than fair. Basically, this is like, if you came to me and said, Jesse, uh, I will give you $100 and you give me 10000 tomorrow. 
then that, yeah, yeah, of course you're gonna take like you're gonna take that deal every time. Like, or if I said Asa, if you give me a hundred dollars, I'm gonna give you ten thousand dollars tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You're gonna take that deal every time. Like, yeah, why not? I'll give him a hundred dollars. I will have we, but we would have some serious conversations if yesterday you came to me and said, hey, if you give me, if you give $50. me a, a dollar, I will give you ten thousand dollars tomorrow. No, I will. I will have some question as to, wait, why do I have to give you? Why do I have to give you a hundred dollars now? Why, why do I have to give you, like, I know that's not the, the exact thing, but, like, because you're looking at it in a vacuum and you can't. Like, it is, again, yes, that is a phenomenal deal. But when you compare it to what they've been doing, like, th- no, that's, like, and it's Disney, too. They don't need that money. They've it's removed Spider-Man from the equation. Alone this year at the box office, they have made $5 billion. <laughs> And they still have a Star way Wars more, movie. Way coming. more than five billion. Significantly more than five uh, million. Yes, no, I'm aware. Like billion, I'm being yes. I'm going fast and loose. Like And th- again it's again, this is all this is what this is, is this is billionaires being greedy on both sides. Yeah. They don't give a crap about us, about the general movie audience, about like even Kevin Feige. Like, I think Kevin Feige has a, an emotional stake and is trying to truly do something special, and this is screwing him over. Yeah. So it's, but they don't care. It's all just penny pinchers and number crunchers of trying to get ex, as as much possible money as possible, and they're going to end up shooting themselves in the leg because the whole thing of like, well, hey, don't worry, Sony will still make a live action Spider Man movie with Tom Holland. I don't want that. No, that no. sounds terrible. Cause because because you know, he's not going to be with the, the they're not going to be it'll able be to removed do, from the MCU. It'll be completely removed from the MCU. Right. And like I've made my thoughts on Venom very clear. Like mm-hmm. I don't want him, I don't want him and Tom Hardy like to Dude. come together as Venom. Because yeah, here's the thing. Like the next movie, if they're because the next Spider Man movie, unless they do this, the next Spider Man movie is it won't tank, but it won't make oh it won't tank. It won't make the numbers that these two have made. No. Unless they do maximum carnage, well, okay, and just be like put everything on no. the table on French. Venom the made, next, the next Tom Holland Spider-Man movie will likely make as much money as the previous ones had because Venom made eight hundred million dollars. The one following that will tank, yeah. and I and I'm only disagreeing uh, because I'm looking at the numbers that Spider-Man three beat Spider-Man one and two. No, that's what I'm saying. So the next Spider-Man movie from like with Tom Holland produced completely by Sony, uh-huh. with Sony doing all the legwork, that movie will do phenomenal in the block in the box office. The movie following, like critically, it'll be a failure, and the movie following will not make any money. Like that's that's how that that's how that. Trend that's also is where work. I think there's a little bit of a disconnect that we have is because I I don't know if it if it truly was Sony did no work on it. Like I think this was a Sony production. Confirmed, Sony did no work on it. They literally got to put their name it. on it. And I need the but where did the confirmation come from? Like have the they, internet. Like that's that's the deal. That that's was the deal they had. <laughs> Sony bankrolled it. Like what more do you want from me? No, yeah, but like. I get that Sony bankrolled it, but like they didn't. It wasn't like a Sony Productions. Like they didn't put any of their Sony people put their on the on film. No. Okay. They yeah, executively so- produced this movie. Yeah. Sony. Okay. Sony gave Kevin Feige money, mm-hmm. and then Sony's name got to be on it. Sony got to market the movie, mm-hmm. and everything else was all MCU Disney. Okay. Uh, with Kevin Feige. Like Sony, like, like Sony, he oversaw everything because it was you know MCU stuff. But yeah, I mean he was to, taking care of the writing, he was taking care of the casting, the directing, mm-hmm. the right, like all of that. Yeah, all that was Kevin. Feige. It was his people. Like it was they, his, him and his people. Yeah, uh, Sony gave them money. Right. Uh, and yeah, like and that's and I I really don't think going back to your other point, I don't think it's fair to say like well Disney already makes all this money, they don't deserve extra on their work. And like I, I don't like that that mentality. It's not that like, I don't think that they don't deserve extra, but it's that thing of if it is co- holding up because Disney's wanting now an exponentially bigger chunk of. Not saying that they don't deserve it, but when that deal, when you know that previous that previous deal is there as a precedent, like I don't know, it just feels like they could. It wouldn't hurt them at all to just continue that same deal. Correct. Like they they would not see a, a loss on anything. They would. It's not gonna. It's not gonna hurt them. Even if they like took a huge loss, it's not like that's really gonna affect their bottom line in any real sense, because of the again billions they've already they already have and have made. But it is all about it is all about money. They want to maximize the amount of yeah. money that they can get. And I get that. It's it's a business. This is capitalism. That's fair. But it's that point of. But at a certain point, we are starting to then they are going. They are willing to cut off their own foot. Because well, my point is that Sony had like Sony was getting free money, mm-hmm. and when Disney was like, "Well, we want some of that," 
Like we we want you know we want our fair shake of that. Sony's like, yeah, see, you were already giving us a bunch of free money. We don't want significantly less free money. Right. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, Sony can just take that fifty fifty deal, cash their paycheck, and move on. Like it, it, it bugs me that they're just like, no, yeah, we want to keep basically like riding you guys. Because I think the big the big problem is if they if like if they if they've got their you know their their cojones under them. And now they're like, no, no, we don't need you to make a good live action Sony movie. Like, we don't need you to make a live action Spider Man movie. That's where I'm like, uh, uh-uh, nope, no, no. And that's where Sony's at. Give the give the give the toys back. Give, <laughs> give, the, give the toys back because I did. But like it, that was my thoughts on Tuesday. Like, go back and listen to Tuesday, and that's what I thought was happening. Yeah. But I think it is more about the you're not just gonna come in and like totally upend this agreement that we'd previously had, or at least not gonna factor it in to a potential new agreement. Will this story change by the end of next week? Probably. Like I think just, Sony's getting a lot of bad PR. Both of this. them are at this point. Both yeah, of them both are. of them really like, are. They, they are both taking heavy hits because it was that thing of oh everyone pile on Sony because they make bad movies. They make bad Spider-Man movies. Pile on them, and then it's like oh wait a minute, oh that's what happened. Hey Disney, mm, what you doing over there, buddy? Because basically, like, what, what we're getting at really is, like, th- this table is pretty representative. Where you have, like, uh, one in three people is like, well, back up, Disney. The other two people are like, no, that's fair. Uh, and that's where, like, you get you see a lot of that on the internet. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's kind of been the backlash. So both of them are taking heat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think Sony's again, definitely this, taking more. This is, this is, these are two billion dollar companies yeah. that could absolutely afford to not, like trip over themselves trying to make as big a profit as possible because like to give the fans something that would be great and that's where i come to like really it's just like no yeah both of y'all are being crappy and i wish you would just like at least acknowledge the fact other than your yeah we're disappointed too you're the ones that can change it yeah i don't want to hear that either yeah. one of you could go ahead and make this deal like for the fans because the, pre- the people making this deal don't care yeah, they, they want, don't care. They want their money. They want as much money as possible. The fact that they've already got billions of dollars, that's not enough. I want more than that. And to me, that's where it's like just ridiculous. Yep. All right, so we need to cut this off, though, because we need to get to – we're 30 minutes into the show, and we haven't even started D23. Well, looks like that Mortal Kombat minute's going to be 30 seconds. <laughs> the, the hell it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, with D23, like I'll try and uh, get through this. Like I, I want to give it the time it deserves, but I'm um, very, very sorry about the Sony Disney discussion, y'all. That was good. Uh, right? Especially for people that <laughs> listen to it on Tuesday. You're welcome. No, uh, this, was, uh, this was much updated from what we had on Tuesday. Fair point. All right, so uh, moving on, though. We got D23 happened. We got a ton of news out of that uh, and a lot of updates and a lot of new footage. The footage has largely not been available to us yet, uh, which is a little bit of a bummer because I was wanting to, you know, watch a lot of it. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, not been made available to us yet. Uh, First, to start, like one of the things they came up with, I just want to get this out of the way. uh, Disney Plus has confirmed they will not host R-rated content. Uh, That doesn't mean that there will not be any R-rated content. They've made it pretty clear that that's going to Hulu Mm -hmm. uh, because we've already got confirmed some R-rated TV shows coming to, well, they may not necessarily be R-rated, but they're certainly going to be for a more mature audience. Yeah, yeah. Like the Ghost Rider show and uh, stuff like that, like Hellblazer. uh, Not Hellblazer. No, that's DC. Uh, Yeah, it is. Uh, Oh, what is his name? Not Mephisto. No. Uh, Morbius. No. No. Well, yes, Morbius, but no. Uh, well, I tried. Well, Morbius is actually Sony. I keep so. on. It's, I keep oh, on say Hell. I keep good. on say Hellfire Club, but it's not. Yeah, it's not the Hellfire not Club that. either. Why not? Oh, I can't. Johnny remember. Hellstorm. Yeah, yeah, Hellstrom. Hellstrom. Yeah, Hellstrom. Which Hellstorm is his thing. Yeah. Him and his sister. Mm-hmm. All right, we got there. We made it. Good job, Asa. Um, <laughs> I tried. You said yeah, a Sony you, property. You, you tried, <laughs> but it wasn't helpful. All right. Uh, so anyway, so either way, uh, R-rated content is not going to happen on Disney Plus, which is fine. They've got Hulu for it. Um. So anyway, the other stuff we got a, a bunch of reaffirming st- uh, stories. Uh, we got more information out of like the what if stuff. Uh, apparently, they showed some clips. Again, we couldn't see it yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, from the what if stuff, where like uh, Peggy Carter takes Super Soldier Serum. Uh, at one Steve point, Steve Rogers gets the uh, is it Zambi for a second. Well, Steve, there was one where Steve Rogers got like Mark oh, yeah, no, one, Mark of the one Iron, Iron Man. Man suit. Yeah, so like some really interesting sounding what if stories, and it's all going to be animated mm-hmm. uh, with the, the actual actors doing Which, the the voice roles. That's huge. I'm on it. Like that's uh, awesome. Yeah, no, that's super cool. Like Haley Atwell apparently came out on stage and mm-hmm. was talking about it. 
Uh, so that's super neat. We also got uh, a little bit. We got definite confirmation, which I think we already had, but 100% confirmation that the Loki stuff will be about his adventures after grabbing the Tesseract. Yep. Uh, in Endgame. Sorry for the spoilers. I guess if you somehow still haven't seen Endgame. Uh, but anyway, we also got a little bit of Falcon and Winter Soldier footage. Uh, we got a little bit of WandaVision stuff, which that the, poster. Yeah, the WandaVision stuff. Like, I don't. I think. Uh, there's there's been some heavy hinting, including from Tom King himself. It's looking like this is going to be based a whole lot on Tom King's story, but with obviously different characters. And also, uh, it's worth noting too that all of the episodes, like the TV series from D twelve, or like all the stuff that'll be on Disney Plus, will not be coming out all at once. These will be weekly releases yeah. of episodes. It's not just going to be a giant bingeathon, which I kind of prefer, like because now we can actually like take time to watch, watch and digest like, and make sure everybody's kind of on the same page. It would be really unhealthy if they released all of these TV shows on November 12th to me, <laughs> uh, because that's just, all right, y'all, Jesse's taking a week off. We're going to need some wellness updates yeah. <laughs> every once in a while because he hasn't stopped watching these shows. Yeah. Uh, I have a binge problem with television media. I don't need like nine shows to drop that I want to binge. Just Falcon and Winter Soldier. Oh, there's so many more that I want to no, watch. No, no, that's the one I just want uh, to drop all at once. That's the one I'm really worried yeah, about. Sadie's going to make me watch WandaVision. Well, so WandaVision, like, apparently it, it, it's got like, they went back and forth between like some epic superhero shenanigans and like some stuff that looks like it belonged to the Dick Van Dyke show, mm-hmm. uh, which sounds really interesting. Also, Kat Denning's character is returning. This is the biggest news out of WandaVision for me. Uh, yeah, Darcy is going to make an appearance <laughs> in WandaVision. Uh, which makes me really happy because I love Cat Denning. Half classic sitcom, half uh, Marvel insanity. Yes, is what they were pitching it as. Uh, which that Norman Rockwell looking poster that looked really poorly photoshopped, but you know, yeah, whatever. I don't I have did, a lot of room to talk. Cause I didn't look too hard at it. it. You can't even Photoshop that well. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. You saw you saw that picture that poster <laughs> I tried to make. <laughs> it was bad. It, it was, was fine. Very okay. It was a first attempt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, we also got the announcement of three brand new shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got Miss Marvel, She-Hulk, and Moon Knight, which I wonder if, like, did they say Moon Knight is coming to Disney Plus? Yes. Okay. I believe I believe that was the announcement. Is These were three Disney Plus shows. Yeah, because I knew for sure Miss Marvel and She-Hulk were, and I thought that... Which bums me out because if you're going to have an R-rated show on Hulu... It needs to be Moon Knight. Moon Knight. Like, have you seen all of the fake photoshopped ones of Moon Knight and his feud with Dracula? No. It's R-rated. We'll talk about it after the show, but it's amazing. Fair enough. All right. Uh, See, so yeah, I know I'm really, really excited about all three of those, really. Like, Moon Knight gets a bad rap as a Batman ripoff, which, fair, he kind of is. But um, at the same time, like, he's a very different character. He's just, you know, a dude that can do, like, he can fight and use his gadgets. And that's mm-hmm. kind of like, and he fights at night. And he's a billionaire. Uh, that too, yeah. Those are kind of where the similarities end, though. Uh, because, you know, he's a dude with, like, DID, uh, and one of his personalities is possessed by an Egyptian god. Yeah. It's a so real has, weird character. So he sometimes has superpowers. Sometimes he don't. Yeah, it's a weird one. <laughs> he's a real weird character, but he's super fun. Uh, and then, yeah, Miss Marvel and She-Hulk. I just love both of those characters. Uh, this is important. Miss Marvel, Kamala Khan, uh, if, for those of you <coughs> not, in, not in the know on that. Yeah. Uh, she's just an awesome, like, teenage inhuman character. Uh, and apparently she will make appearances in like the greater MCU. Uh, so yeah, no, I'm 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 down. That makes She's me happy. awesome. And yes, these are Disney Plus shows. This these announcements happened at the Disney Plus showcase. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and then She Hulk is just awesome. Like she's always been a cool character. Jen Walters. Yeah. The the Hulk lawyer. <laughs> Which did I ever show you? I know I showed Asa. Uh, this is just a super little fun thing in the Spider Gwen comic in Earth sixty five uh, in Gwen Stacy's Earth. Okay. Um, she Hulk is a uh, lawyer. She actually is uh, Gwen Stacy's lawyer in one of the scenes, and she paints herself green. And she's actually a professional wrestler that's also a lawyer that goes by Hulk, and she talks like Hulk Hogan. Brother, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that makes my heart happy. I'm surprised I never showed you this because no. it's awesome. Yeah, Tell she me just the paints issue. Herself I'll, I have green. Marvel Unlimited. I'll <laughs> find a panel. I'll, I'll find it for you. Yeah, because uh, it's it's pretty delightful. So, you know, I'm, I'm super excited about that. So, yeah, we got uh, we also got another animated show they announced. Uh, Moon Girl and Devil Dino is getting its own show. It's going to be, like I said, animated. Uh, Lawrence Fishburne is doing something in it. We don't know what yet. Uh, it'd be kind of interesting to hear him just do dinosaur noises. 
but I'm sure he's going to have a much larger role. Uh, we also got um, Black Panther 2. We got an official release date out of that for May, or May 6th, 2022. Um, we got confirmation earlier that Kit Harrington was going to be in the MCU. Uh, a lot of people are speculating that he was going to be Wolverine. <laughs> Which, okay, so that's what Ken said originally of that it was that he could be Logan. And I like I just don't see it. But having talked to him and then Billy at the show, because I haven't seen – the only thing I've seen of him in Game of Thrones is him kind of being like Broody. whiny and sulky and moody. And I'm like, no, that's he's terrible. Uh, but then they kind of explained some of the other things, and they're like, no, and I was like, okay, from that from that added context, I can see it. But at that point, we've already established that he's not going to be Logan, correct? Which there's no way that they're going to not cast someone and not immediately say that that they're going to be Wolverine, Jared Kiso. Dad, that would still be cool. He's <laughs> a little tall. That's fine. Uh, he's the toughest guy in Letterkenny. <laughs> it's true. Uh, the fight scenes would be so dumb. They would be. So anyway, uh, well, I mean, they wouldn't because Disney's directing them. All those fight scenes look great. Oh, that's true. Uh, either way, yeah, Kit Harrington is not Wolverine. Like mm-hmm. we we have that confirmed now. Looks like he's going to be uh, Dane Whitman, uh, the Black Knight in uh, the Eternals movie. Oh, that'll be cool. Uh, so yeah, I mean that that's fine. I'm I'm less hyped about that, but whatever. The Eternals. It's probably going to Guardians of the Galaxy me. Where, like, I'm not even a little bit hyped about the Eternals, but I'm not even hyped about most of the cast. Yeah, other than Kumail. But at the same time, like, yeah. I'm going to still watch it. And honestly, like, seeing the superhero outfits, again, it just goes back to, yep, this looks like future tech body armor, I guess. Like, they all kind of look similar, except they're Power Ranger colors. <laughs> so, yeah. We all know uh, how about that. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, we also got, uh, we didn't actually get to see it, but apparently David Harbour, uh, he is going to be in full like Red Guardian costume. Well, uh, we saw the poster. Oh, we did. I didn't see the poster. Yeah. So there's a, there's a glimpse of, there's a glimpse of him, uh, just like it's, it's a profile shot, but he's in the mask. Oh, nice. And then there's also, you get kind of a little look at, uh, it's, it's very faded and it's like, so you don't see a lot, but the head of the face of Taskmaster as well Ooh. and he kind of looks like he has a paintball mask on oh yeah it's it's very it's again that's what i was talking about like it's just the 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 mcu realism body stuff armor going. realistic stuff so that's a little bit of a bummer yeah we'll i was to see how it goes i wasn't thrilled i'm sure it'll look better live but yeah i was yeah. Uh, uh we also got a ton of other projects from pixar and disney and disney animated studios uh, not really any trailers. We got a little bit more information about uh, Cruella, uh, the the prequel series that's going to be starring Emma Stone as Cruella Deville. Uh, apparently, it's going to be a little bit of uh, punk rock, nineteen seventies London, which sounds kind of dope. Because uh, it's a prequel. Yes. Neat. Did I did I say that? I think I said that. Prequel. Cruella. Maybe. Either way. That's fine. Uh, Pixar. Uh, we got a couple. We got uh, the first look at Soul, one of their new movies coming up. Uh, adorable looking little critters. I'm sure it's going to make me cry because F you Pixar. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little bit more information on Onward. Uh, we also got from uh, Disney Animated, uh, Raya and the Last Dragon and Frozen 2. Again, all of this is stuff that was shown at D23 that we haven't, as you know, the public been able to see yet. Um, obviously, a lot of these have been announced already except for, I think Soul was announced, but we hadn't seen anything. Yeah. Um, Tina Fey is going to be in it, so I'll, I'll see it. Ooh, yeah. Um, no Bugs Life 2. And then uh, Star Wars. This is stuff we actually got videos out of. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got the official trailer for The Mandalorian. Which, that looks tight. Boy, I haven't heard that. What year is it? <laughs> <laughs> is it 1999? I sent you the poster for uh, Black Widow on Facebook. Okay, cool. Um, I'll have to have a look at that in a second. The trailer looks awesome. Like the, the I I've, I am now way more excited for this show than when it was announced. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, because I didn't realize that. Um, oh, now I'm blanking on his name. Uh, Gus from Breaking oh, Bad. Oh yeah, I don't remember that dude's name either. But as soon as I saw him, I was like, Gus Spring. Yeah, Gus Spring's <laughs> gonna be in it. That's awesome. Um, I learned something today that bums me out a little bit because I was like, holy crap, they're putting IG Eleven in the Mandalorian. That's awesome. Voiced by? Taika Waititi. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, man. Like, nah. I don't want him to be goofy. He doesn't. He won't He's, necessarily be Korg. 
uh, like he he doesn't have. That's to be... all I'm gonna hear though. Well, yeah, but he, he he may not be though. Like all all we know is if Taika Waititi is voicing him, that just means he will likely have a little bit of a Kiwi accent, which is fine. Space Australians, <laughs> which is fine because Star Wars is just full of space British people. So. Exactly. Yeah. Who who says like yeah. who's to no, say it's there's not a space the, Australian? The voice somewhere. in my head when I read when like when I read that Bounty Hunter book because that was my favorite piece of extended universe that did not survive was Ooh. was the Bounty Hunter collection and yeah, IG Eleven cool. was awesome. Yeah. I loved him. He's a cool robot. And it's just like oh, I don't want him to be a jokey like side character. Like I want to, I, I, maybe he'll be a badass. Like I don't know. I, I'll have to watch it and find out. And I will because I think it's gonna be awesome. But because the trailer was awesome. The trailer Carl, was so Carl good. Carl Weathers. Yeah. Looking real scary. Mm-hmm. Mm. No, I'm I'm here for it. One hundred percent. I'm excited about that that show. Uh, and that will drop like November twelfth with the rest of the D plus content. Uh, <laughs> so uh, it, unfortunately, not all and, at once. Mandalorian and other. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we got the other bit of Star Wars stuff we got uh, was a new Rise of the Skywalker trailer, mm-hmm. which definitely showed off some more interesting things. More of a te- like I would give that a teaser. Yeah, teaser is probably a better word for it. Uh, particularly the end with uh, Darth three PO and uh, Ray's light like Ray's Sith lightsaber stuff going on. Revolutionary. A third Star Wars movie where the main good guy protagonist is being teased as being evil? <laughs> I've never seen anything like this before. <laughs> so That said uh, the edit of the Swiss Army Saber. Uh, the, that was, so, I actually saw that the, while scrolling through today. The Sith Army Knife is what they were calling yeah, it. I liked that a Love lot. Love that. That was really funny. But yeah, no, she pops up like, this, this is the coolest dual lightsaber we've seen so far. Mm-hmm. Just like throws it down, turns into, oh, that was Turns neat. into the Maul Saber. Uh, like, I know it's ridiculous. I'm here for it. I, like, <laughs> like, I, just, I don't think it's better than Kylo's. I don't think it's real. No, it's not. Like, I, I, like I'm sure that's, that's a dream scene. It's a, it's a dream sequence. It's a vision of what could be because yes. he's going to try one last ditch effort uh, to recruit to, her to, to, recruit to the, her to the yeah. dark side. I also very much loved the uh, someone on Reddit was like, so do you think they're going to turn all the lines on Kylo's helmet upside down to make it look like a smile when he turns good? <laughs> when he redeems himself. And someone cut out like they took a picture of his mask and like cut out a smiley face and added eyebrows to it to make it look friendly. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. It was real silly. Oh, I enjoyed I it. Uh, sorry, the way no, I'm 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 pumped for it. Like I'm hyped for this movie. But then again, uh, I definitely liked uh, Last Jedi, The Last Jedi, and the uh, Force Awakens. Yes, thank I you. I liked the first one, but you, didn't like the second. one. You liked the movies, and I didn't. And you couldn't remember. I was anything. getting there. Like <laughs> you got there half a second before I did. I, I posted it on a uh, Heath. I post. had them backwards. Like mm-hmm. I almost said, The Last Jedi, and then The Force Awakens. And mm-hmm. I was like, No, that's not right. It was the yeah. other way around. I put it on Facebook today. Heath hadn't posted something about it, and I was just like. I really hope that this one makes me like The Last Jedi more. Like, I see, hope, that's kind of what I'm thinking is like maybe having the full story will laid make out me will, like the middle more because like right now we only, we have two of a two of a three part story, and mm-hmm. I don't I didn't like the second part. I, I love a lot of and a lot of people didn't like Empire when it first came out too. Yeah, and that's what I'm hoping a is bummer the case. ending and yeah. and like nobody understood the prequels, so that was <laughs> that's a wash. But, it's not um, that nobody understood them. Nobody liked, nobody them. liked them. But we um, understood it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we we understand what the message is when they they go like you know nails on a chalkboard. Like we could read the message. So, some of that like other uh, some of that extra footage from the Clone Wars again is making me like I need to go back and just yes watch that series because that was the other thing we got was a little bit of a trailer for I I, I don't even think we got a teaser like mm-hmm. I would qualify it as that for the newest season of uh, Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. That was the last little bit of Star Wars we got. Uh, no, it wasn't. Wait, what? What else did we get? Uh, we got the confirmation that... Oh, Obi-Wan Kenobi! Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I, I thought, like, I had That's seen that. Awesome. I was like, we already had that we, information, no, but... We talked about it last week because it was rumored, and, like, that was the report was, going around is that... It was it, confirmed. Like, you and McGregor confirmed that he was Obi-Wan. Was it? Because yes. I know there was a lot of people that were, like, waiting to actually hear it from Disney before they were willing to... Yeah, Disney hadn't hit it, but it was confirmed. Okay. Like, gotcha. Ewan McGregor had confirmed himself that he was going to be Obi-Wan. Okay. Well, uh, Ezra Miller confirmed that <laughs> the Flash, Flash movie is happening, happening, so... <laughs> you know, that's 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 completely fair. Yeah, no, Disney did officially confirm mm-hmm. that we're getting a, a to-be-named Obi-Wan Kenobi series, and Ewan McGregor will be reprising his role as... The titular character. Well, okay, you know it hasn't been titled yet. So, uh, yeah, no, I'm, yeah, I'm as excited about that this week <laughs> as I was last week. Mm-hmm. Like, I love me some Ewan McGregor. 
Because mm-hmm. good news is, yes, he's aged, but he's still not that old yet. Because that- <laughs> he, he doesn't look near as old as uh, what's his name that played uh, Ben Kenobi in the uh, the original trilogy. Yeah, it's the it's the thing of like, yeah, I'm not digging the trilogy movies that we're getting, but like all of the side content so far has been really solid. Like yeah. Rogue One is still might be my favorite Star Wars movie. It was fantastic. And but- Solo was great. Yeah, Solo was v- extremely underrated. Uh, I still haven't bought the uh, Black Series figure of him as Obi Wan yet. Really? Yeah. yeah. I say yet. Do it, you coward. I'm good. <laughs> you, right. you, you saw the Macho Man checklist, and I told you prices. Yeah. Do it, you coward. Okay, Asa, did I? Uh, I got. I kind of jumped around on my list here. Did I forget anything that you can think of from D twenty three? Uh, I. Uh, Lizzie McGuire's coming back. Did I forget anything relevant to uh, our listeners? On Sir. <laughs> Yeah, no, they saw Excuse like. Excuse you. Because uh, yeah, they they talked about Lucy McGuire. They talked about like the uh, the new monsters TV show. Uh, uh, high like, school, the musical, the musical, the series. Yeah. Um, um, all the Jeff Goldblum show, the Jeff Goldblum experience. Oh yeah, the the Nat Geo show. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where he's just gonna wander around being Jeff Goldblum in various places. Like yeah. that's I will watch that. Yeah, no, that that's gonna happen. Uh, like I'm just, after I finish all this other content, I'm like, yeah, I I'll s- watch Jeff Goldblum being s- Jeff Goldblum. I sent that those two links from IGN of just like the breakdowns of like the big stuff, and I think that was most everything, because yeah, I- it was mostly like Marvel stuff and the Star Wars stuff is what I really cared about. But at the same time, they're also doing some cool. Like, not stuff for me or, like, for us necessarily, but, like, there's a lot of really – they are clearly taking the streaming service very seriously. Yes. And I very much commend them for that. A lot of original content on there. And, yeah, no, I – there is absolutely an audience that uh, Lizzie McGuire High School Musical, all that stuff, like, they're there for it. Uh, The Lizzie McGuire audience is sitting right in front of you, sir. (laughs) I mean, I liked that show, too, but only because of – liked. Hillary Duff. Yes. Which and you know who's going to be in it? Back. Is Hillary Duff. Oh, that show had some good writing. I don't want to hear sti- that. And guess what? She's I don't remember still our age. About it. Yeah, she is. <laughs> like, it's going to be great. Still older. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, it's still not creepy for me. It's she's, great. She's like working for a designer in New York, and she's still going to have her like cartoon counterpart like popping up to narrate. <gasps> Only it's going to be like CG now. Oh, I hope not. No, I, I don't, I don't, want, that. It, I don't want that. Stuff. It very yeah, much no. needs to be the, the it, 2D cartoon character. Could, that was part of the charm. Then you can hit Uncanny Valley, and I don't need some weird little mini. Hillary no, I want Jimmy around, Neutron like, like commenting on things. Uh, I don't need it. <laughs> no. No, I mean, I, like I said, I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to watch it. But there's no probably. Anyway. You're going to watch it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure there's other stuff that we miss because D23 is a huge thing. Like, yeah. And Especially that's not e- now. And that's not even touching on theme parks or anything like that. Uh, Which, boy. They, like, didn't confirm Black Panther 2, but, like, Ryan Coogler came back and, like, they had some announcement I talked about that. Black Panther 2. Did yeah, you? They okay. got the official release date on it. Oh, okay. That's yeah, right. May 6, 2022. Okay. Uh, uh. <laughs> it's going to be a minute. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, moving on to the comic books. Uh, we'll try and rush through the last bit one, of this. One last movie thing. Uh, they announced the title for the new Bond movie, No Time to Die. I dig that. Yeah. I dig that. Yeah. All right. Uh, so this is next portion of podcast brought to you by our wonderful friends at Villainous Grounds in Perryville, Missouri. Stop by there for all of your comic book needs. Doc Justice and the J-Team, we talked about that last week. They were teasing it, like this brand new, super awesome superhero team. It's the Runaways. I'll be honest. A little, little bit of a letdown. Yeah, a little bit of an underwhelming uh, situation. Cue Price is Right failure music. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't actually want it. Um, oh, that was the bit. I did it. I, you, know, you sure did. You Forky's sure did. getting his own series. Forky is getting his own series. That was, Forky. That was another one. Uh, so anyway. Yeah, so uh, yeah, Doc Justice and the J-Team. Turns out uh, the J-Team is the runaways. Uh, homeboy goes up and recruits them to be actual superheroes. Uh, going to be starting in issue 24, which releases August 28th. Apparent, uh, issue 25 is the one they're saying will be Doc Justice's first appearance. So if you're wanting to get a first appearance of a character, Runaways number 25. If you're wanting to get on on that story, Runaways number 24 is where you're going to want to start. And uh, that'll be the preamble to the 20, uh, issue 27 is when it's all really going to take off, is uh, my understanding. And so Marvel's Star Wars title uh, looks like that one's ending in November. Uh, not a lot of people are too terribly surprised about that. Star Wars is almost certainly going to, they're going to pick up with a different one. Either they're going to relaunch at number one because uh, that will take them through the original trilogy. Like yeah. uh, by issue uh, 75, I think is is the issue they're ending on. Like I, I had that written down, but now it's not. I want to say it's issue 75. That sounds Will be right? the, the last issue of Star Wars. And, yeah, that'll have them through the original trilogy, and then they're almost certainly going to start anew 
because that is like consistently in the top 10 best selling books each month. I remember when it first came out. Did Jason Aaron, did he stay on the book the entire time or no? no? Okay. They've uh, they've changed creative teams a couple of times. Yeah, like, for the different Jason arcs. Aaron stuff was always really good. Yeah, it's apparently been, I keep meaning to get into it, especially now that I have you know Marvel Unlimited, I have access to all those yeah. back issues. I keep meaning to go in and read it because a lot of the Star Wars side content I got into that was really good. Like Charles Soule's Darth Vader was phenomenal. It makes Windu side uh, story was fine. Yeah, uh, so yeah, I, I keep meaning to check it out and I just keep not. So don't worry, Star Wars fans. If you're if you're a fan of the the comic book, you've been reading it. Uh, it will almost certainly be back, but this current run is going to end at issue 75 in November. So we all we also got in November Captain Marvel number 12 will be Dark Captain Marvel's first appearance. Uh, looks like the the headlines that I keep seeing is Carol's Breaking Bad. Um, I I don't think that's exactly what's happening. There's almost certainly some trickery going around. I'm actually keeping up with this book, so I, I have a feeling I have an idea of what's going to happen. And uh, it, it could be really interesting. Is that the Captain Marvel book so far has been shockingly good? You almost have me convinced to add it to my pull list, but it's that thing of like there's so many other Marvel properties that I would like to actively start pulling Fair. Bef- before her, like Tom Taylor's Spider Man and Chip Zdarsky's Daredevil specifically. Also, both really good things. Um, but it's that thing of like, but I'm so close. Like I could have a full run, especially since I do actually have some a lot of those Tom Taylor books. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, gotta find uh, it. I also found out I had different books than I thought I did, so I might be able to get caught up on that uh, that series. Oh, yeah. Uh, I might, or I might be able to have the entire run. Mm-hmm. Why I w- stopped buying them, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tom Taylor and Spider-Man. Like, wh- why? Yeah. Why, Jesse? You have no excuse. You had read X-23. <laughs> <laughs> All the <Pat>, Wolverine. <laughs> past Jesse is dumb sometimes. I think it was really just because like I was already pulling like three spider books at that point, and I was like, look, this is obsessive. I, I have to put a limit here. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, like either way, Captain Marvel number 12, that will be the first appearance. Uh, it's going to be out in November. <coughs> They're calling the story arc The Last Avenger. Did you guys see the second link I posted with that costume? Yeah. That looks dope. I'm on it. I'll get it, a live reaction. I don't... I don't it seemed a little weirdly like try hardy edgelord, which typically, <laughs> I, yeah, I know, I know. That should be like, that should be, Whoa. My new, it should be in my new phone background. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. It's like, I'll, I'll, pull, I'll look at it again. But like, it no, just, I got it right here, buddy. You're good. It didn't, it didn't click no, for I, me. I, I, I which it. again, I also kind of like, I don't have any context of the story or anything. Uh, oh, it's the face mask. It just reminds me of one which of those. Which one did you pull up? Uh, the one with the face mask? It reminds me of one of those stupid oh, yeah. little Venom symbiote things that oh. annoyed the crap out of me. No, oh, yeah, that's blue. fair. It doesn't have eyes. I'm fine with it. <laughs> Neither did these things. No, yeah, these things are just like creepy little like... Uh, Suction cup weird little triangular oh, mouth. No, I dig this a lot. Demogorgon. Right? I'll buy that Marvel Legend twice. That looks so cool. Yeah, it's pretty, like, that's pretty it's, cool. Yeah, no, Put it, a pin in this 2022. <laughs> Marvel Legends? <laughs> yeah. It'll be out like next month. Legends like turn around really quick. Huh. Yeah, it's because they all use the same body mold. Yeah, so yeah, if you want to get in on that, like I highly recommend just checking out the book. Uh, it definitely starts out like which I'm completely okay with this. Uh, I I could get like I could understand like some people's complaints on it. Uh, the the female empowerment is a little heavy handed in the first arc, which I was fine with it. It's cool, like you know you go girl. Uh, but I I could see that being a, a complaint from some people. Some, yeah, uh, and a, and a, and a pretty valid one. Like I said, it's 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 a little heavy handed. Oh yeah. Uh, how, how dare people have representation? It gets better though. Uh, like that that kind of goes away like after the first arc. Uh, so yeah, if you, I'm not I'm done trying to justify it. I enjoyed the hell out of it, so uh, I I highly recommend picking up that book. So anyway, moving past that though, Fantastic Four: The Negative Zone event has been announced for November. November is going to be a big month for comic books. Yeah, it is. We, had, big, we had a bunch of news from last we had last week that was taking place in November. I feel like the last like three weeks have all been like, <laughs> look at all this stuff happening in November, uh, on like Marvel and DC. So we get the negative zone or negative zone event announced uh, for November. We don't know what books that's going to include exactly, other than we saw a cover for the Fantastic Four: Negative Zone number one. So it may just be like uh, probably a side by side with a Fantastic Four book. Not entirely sure, but there's apparently a threat in the negative zone, and they've got to deal with it. Yeah, the Fantastic um, Four books have been pretty good. Yeah. Something that I am personally super excited about, uh, we're getting a Spider-Man 2099 event uh, announced for November as well. 
Question. Yes, say so. Is there currently a Spider-Man 2099 book? There is not. Okay. That's what I thought. I was just, I thought I'd like missed something. <laughs> I just uh, thought it was weird that there's a 2099 event, but no 2099. Yeah, there is no t- current 2099 Spider-Man book. There almost certainly will be at the conclusion of this event. <coughs> uh, it's going to start with Amazing Spider-Man number 33. Uh, it's actually only going to include, uh, it's a super self-contained event, which I like a lot Mm -hmm. because it's going to be amazing Spider-Man 33 through 35, as well as two, um, like 2099 alpha 2099 Omega. Like Mm -hmm. it's that typical, which they've been doing those like little one shot bookend. Yep. Yeah. Two little one shot books. Uh, and then it will have seven tie-ins, but, uh, unlike previous Marvel events, they're not going to be ongoing books. Uh, Fantastic Four, Punisher, Conan, Spider-Man, Ghost Rider, Doom, and Venom append 2099 to each of those. They're all one-shots. They're going to be one-shot tie-ins for the book. Good news is I don't have to get any of those. Uh, I'm getting a Doom 2099 and probably a Venom 2099. And the Punisher 2099 cover looked really dope. But Conan. (laughs) (laughs) Dear Lord. Uh Am, okay, so Superior Spider-Man. Yes. There was an arc that led to Miguel O'Hara being trapped in current day, wasn't there? Uh, yeah, temporarily. Briefly, for, uh, like that, but that wasn't like it. That didn't turn into its own ongoing, it, did no. it? No. Okay. No, it did not. Which is a bummer. Like I, I need more Spidey 2099. Because I'm life. wondering if maybe that's what it'll be of if it is just going to be a 2099 book taking place in you know the current far future day. or if it is going to be a. It'll be. It'll definitely be 2099 for the most part. Okay. Because uh, I think Miguel got home. Like yeah, it, no, so. he, he, I'm, I'm, I'm like 90% sure he ended up going back. Yeah. And it, like he wasn't here very I long. Think but it was something to do with Spider-Verse or Spider-Geddon that he was trapped here for. Maybe. If I remember right. But it's been a while since Cause I've not Because I, I didn't read Spider-Verse whenever I was reading Sinister or Superior. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was a little bit of overlap there, but not yep. a lot. Uh, and it was in a, a different timeline, sort of. So anyway, so yeah, the Spider-Man 2099 event, I'm, I'm super excited about it. I love me some Spidey 2099. Like, I like that universe a lot. So if we could expand on that, great. All right, this final portion of our podcast, when uh, I'm sorry, we're, uh, we are now officially over time. But, um, you know what, content. You, you guys love give, it. I said we let Ace have this one. The rest uh, of the stories, I'm not super. Related. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shotgun it a little <laughs> bit. Me and Ace are both gonna talk about the. <laughs> you ain't got, you ain't got us to say, homie. <laughs> like I don't think you understand how giving, this works. I was giving you more time for your spot, sir. I was getting enough time. Like I was taking the time that I needed, <laughs> sir. It's not your call, is yeah. what I'm telling you. It's yeah, like, I appreciate I was gonna the have gesture, to... but you're waving me through the stop sign when I have the right of way, and it just annoys <laughs> everybody involved. Like. Yeah, because basically, in order to keep Ace from talking about what uh, that that segment, uh, I would have to physically remove him from the microphone. Yes, oh. that's the only way that would. Or happen. just stop recording in the middle of it. <laughs> right. uh, th- that's way easier. Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> so anyway, like it didn't happen. This portion of the podcast brought to you by Press Start to Join. You can find all of their content at ps 2 jshowcom including their social media links uh, and all their past episodes. I okay. Um, Destiny two. We're gonna we're gonna shotgun through this a little bit. Destiny to cross. Destiny to cross save and Steam export are now live, so you can get signed up for that. Uh, especially if you have been playing Destiny two on PC and you plan on jumping back in when it goes free to play, uh, make sure you get that transfer happening as soon as possible because you want to be ready to go when the game comes out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did that today. Super painless and quick and easy process. Uh, we got uh, an announcement trailer for Humankind, a new IP from Sega. Looks very uh, Civ style gameplay with a little bit of Age of Empires maybe mixed in. The trailer uh, they showed at Gamescom looked really cool. Looks real neat, and I, I like I dug the crap out of the the way they did the trailer mm-hmm. with the caveman making electronic music. It was mm-hmm. neat, uh, and then floating in a space or like in a satellite at the end of it. That mm-hmm. was that was super cool. Uh, all right, and then the Dice has canceled their five v five Battlefield competitive mode. Um, that makes a lot of sense, honestly. Like one, well, one Battlefield has kind of been a dumpster fire this this round. Yeah. Um, from my understanding, I haven't touched it, but like I know Kevin liked it quite a bit, and I played it with him once. But between like browsing through the subreddit occasionally and like the news about their battle royale system, like the battle royale mode, mm-hmm. uh, being so far delayed, and then even when it came out, apparently it sucks. Uh, and now it's like, why would you try to compete with Modern Warfare about to come out because that you're you're not it's not going to work. Like it's just it, it's just not gonna go. So like I, I get it, but at the same time, like fans of the series will probably be disappointed that this was some content that they were promised that. Yeah. Or maybe they don't care because they weren't gonna use it anyway. 
either one, definitely possible. Okay, and the last little bit, I'm going to hit the headline. Ace is going to take it. Um, so we got our, the rest of the Mortal Kombat Combat Pack 1 announced, as well as their release dates. Uh, and we're getting the remainder is Terminator Sindel, Joker from Batman, uh, and Spawn with October, November, January, and then March as our release dates. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Asa, hit us. Okay, so here's the deal. Mortal Kombat 11 in the in the build up for the for the launch Ed Boon and and the and NetherRealm have said that this is going to be the longest supported game they've ever done. They told us that we're going to have like the bigger the most DLC they've ever done. The combat packs are going to be bigger than they've ever done. Like it, this is going to be a huge deal. And I'm not as mad about it as I was initially like my gut reaction of seeing Spawn coming out March 17th. 11 months after the game releases. And that's the end of Combat Pack 1, folks. Combat Pack 1. It's and so we've we've gotten two characters so far. We're getting our next character in October and then the turnaround there's relatively quick cuz it goes from Terminator to Sindel at the beginning of October and the end of November. Yes. Joker comes out in January and then Spawn again. That's March. So every 2 months after that I think part of the reason people are so upset is because when we're told, like, hey, we're supporting this game for as long as possible, we were expecting more content, not slightly more content, like three, four more characters total, spread out so much farther. Yeah. Because in Justice, once those combat packs hit, they were literally every two weeks we were getting a new character. Yeah. It no, was no, no. A- Sorry. Mortal Kombat X was every two weeks. Injustice was about once a month. Yeah. And now we have stretches of every other month. On top of the fact that they're only just now announcing who the confirming, sorry, who these characters are, which Sindel they'd already revealed before Nightwolf, which was kind of weird. Like we saw that still image of the trailer. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joker was rumored. Uh, the Terminator was like most of these were already like in the rumor mill. Were, they were they were in the the leak. I guess, and Spawn was confirmed in that initial, the initial where they announced uh, Nightwolf, Sindel, and Spawn. It was yeah. the other two. There was Joker and Terminator that weren't confirmed yet. Uh, also, there's a lot of speculation that Joker and Ash Williams got switched be- to tie in with the Joker movie that's coming out, even though they're completely unrelated. Mm-hmm. Wait, is there uh, a Joker movie coming out in January? The Joaquin Phoenix. Oh. I don't. I don't know when it's coming. Like, I don't know if that. If it's you know, it's not going to be like a day and date thing, but it'll be roughly around the same. Hey, there was a Joker movie recently, or there's about to be a Joker. Okay, movie, something I, was like that. Say, I didn't even know it was supposed to come out that soon. Uh, it's pretty. It's relatively soon. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, actually, I want to say it's like November. It doesn't matter. Um, but so it's. It's the going for it's again. It's that precedent that was set. Like in a vacuum, I feel like we wouldn't really care. But knowing the release schedule that they had previously, it's kind of rough to be like, "Who? Okay." Like it's better now that we have dates because with Nightwolf and Shang Tsung, it was literally just waiting for them to make an announcement. Mm-hmm. Amongst the the so many like trolling tweets from Ed Boon. Yeah, October fourth, by the way is joker the joker movie okay so, so yeah very soon so yeah they might have just the care it's probably the character isn't ready to mm-hmm. go in the october slot yeah so they just but they need they wanted him to be as, at least part of the conversation with the movie when's the new terminator movie come out look I, that up what's the terminator movie name i, I, I did right, i'll look it up yeah new Terminator Dark Fate, movie. i think or was that one that Something already came like out that. uh anyway but sh- they got arnold like not only likeness but voice oh they said that arnold will not be the voice of terminator Really? I just uh, read an article face. about that today. Huh. Yeah, no, they said his face. I'll look that up. You November continue. 1st, by the way. November 1st? Okay, so yeah, so he comes out, you know, three weeks before the movie comes out. Yeah. Because uh, Ed Boon tweeted, I can't, I still, sometimes I still can't believe we got Arnold. Which they, maybe he may just be referring to the likeness. He yeah. may, he may not be using the, the voice. Which if it, it if, yeah, confirmed. Um, Ar- Mor- Arnold Schwarzenegger is not voicing the Terminator for Mortal Kombat 11. Maybe he <gasps> Holy won't Holy crap. Uh, he better. Like, the, the crap they pulled with Jason and Alien and Predator last time, because a lot of Mortal Kombat's, like, heart is those intro dialogues that are yeah. character-specific. And so you give us... And Leatherface. Like, half of the DLC that came out last time were just grunts and groans. Oh, that's going to be a bummer. Yeah, because if you just Google uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger MK11, uh, it's like six videos, not going to be voiced, and then like every link, not voicing, not voicing. Likeness being used, Mm -hmm. not voiced. 
Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and I guess uh, it maybe it wasn't. Maybe, no, that's Krusty the Clown. Maybe it'll end up not being Ash Williams, too, because, like, uh, Bruce Campbell tweeted a while back that he wasn't, like, Ash Williams is not going to be in a Mortal Kombat game. So, but every, but, they, but there was a chainsaw at the end of the trailer. Of that, reveal, of that reveal trailer where they were, like, and two more unre- unreleased char- or two more unannounced characters. Which, yeah, it very well could because it's not like Bruce Campbell owns the rights to Ash Williams. Yeah, so who knows. So, uh, yeah. The trailer itself also, like, wasn't great. Like it was yeah, very, it was, it was just characters kind of walking. Uh, Joker looks weird. Joker Some, looks super weird. So, someone said he looks like a WWE 2K create a character, and ever since they said that, I can't see it any other way. Well, now I gotta look at it again. Uh, Spawn looks awesome. Yeah, Arnold yeah, he does. Arnold looks awesome. Sindel looks awesome. Uh, it was really just Joker was the only one I didn't like. Joker kind of was, was stuck out a little bit like a sore thumb, and and honestly, like I'm okay with them. I'm okay with them taking their time because I also understand, like, crunch is a very big problem in the video game industry. And, like, I don't want these people killing themselves for this content. But at the same time, like, it's a little bit of a bummer that I don't think they were as forthcoming in their marketing as they could have been. Yeah. Because, like I said, you know, they're, they're talking all this game about, like, okay, for sure, two combat packs, we're going to be taking care of this game for years, which is great. And, like, but that could also mean, like, updates. And with the way that they're doing, like, skins and, like, gear and things like that, like, they could be referring to gear and stuff like that, too. Or just, you know, hey, we're also doing a third combat pack. You know, they said the amount of DLC is going to be bigger than they've ever done, which has been with every game, like... Mortal Kombat X had four DLC characters. Injustice and then had, had like, like six, and then Injustice Two had more than six. No, no. But like, so, but, they like, did. They did three uh, packs. Oh yeah, they did the three. Three, three with four apiece. So yeah. they did twelve. Yeah, and then so like this first pack has six characters in it. Then again, this is just you know Combat Pack One. Yeah. So I mean, it's cool that we finally have dates. It's just kind of a bummer it's that a it's pers- just like. Man, I really, w- I was really hoping that we would still get that same kind of turnaround that we've gotten in these previous games. It's a perceived value that they put on it. Where it's like we're we're doing this for as long as we ever have, but we're gonna take our sweet time, which is good. Like, yeah. But it's one of those like it's the precedent like you were talking about. They put a perceived perceived value on it. And it'll be nice if those characters don't come out like you know super broken, because then you run into like what happens in Smash Brothers, where the internet immediately complains because like the new character is busted every single release. Yeah, no, every time one comes out, and, you know, back busted, in... Sp- busted good or bad. Yeah, and in Smash 4, they were right. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Ultimate so far, like, everybody jumps on, like, oh, this character's not good at all. Then Leo wins a tournament with him. <laughs> uh, and then this other character comes out, it's like, oh, my God, he's completely broken. He didn't break top 64 in the last, like, two majors. But the RNG, G- but the <laughs> RNG Jesse, you can't prepare for it. There's, yeah, there is RNG. That's true. So, I don't know. I, like, it's cool. A lot of the designs are really cool. Joker is a big miss for me. Both in design and in the character I want in a Mortal Kombat game. Yes, I mean it just it flat out doesn't make sense. You've got Injustice with Joker in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, why why do we need him in Mortal Kombat? And I mean I guess it's kind of newsworthy because like or it's noteworthy because it like the Mortal Kombat versus Injustice game like Warner Brothers flat out was like no you will not have fatalities. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You can have heroic brutalities, but they don't die. You got to watch them stand back up, and then they fall down. Because that was one of those things. Like I remember when uh, MK versus DC first got announced, and they were talking about like uh, Joker had like they were working on it. Joker had a fatality, and WB is like, now, "Hold up, what? Mm-hmm. You you got Joker actually killing somebody in that in that shot?" And like, "Well, yeah, it's Mortal Kombat." Mm-hmm. Like, eh, no, none of that. Mm-hmm. Wait, what? Yeah, and then they used they used that Joker fatality as one of Shang Tsung's fatalities in the in Mortal Kombat Nine. Nice. Uh, he just he turns into a clown, doesn't look like Joker, but he turns into a clown, mm-hmm. and then pulls the trigger, takes a pistol out, pulls the trigger, bang comes out. He does the Joker laugh, like same animation, another what gun, and then just blows their head off. Oh, with that's a revolver. awesome! So they really did just completely reuse it. Totally, one hundred percent. That's good so, stuff. Uh, and likely, like that's probably going to be one of his fatalities too, uh, except you know, grosser because. Yeah, we're, on the, we're on the PS4 now, boys. And MK11 <laughs> has definitely upped their game on, like, how gross can we make these fatalities. Yeah. So, I mean, it's cool. I'm glad they're not killing themselves, or I hope they're not killing themselves for this release schedule. But I can't. I, I would be lying if I, if I said that I was not disappointed that Spawn, who's one of the first ones they announced, doesn't come out until 11 months after the game releases. Yeah, no, I mean, like, like March should be, like, they should be starting up Combat Pack 2 by March. And that's what I was thinking, is like, okay, you know, let's get everything, we'll get everything out, you know, this year or within a year, and then, and which I guess they kind of are, and then if they are going to do, which I, you, 
if they put out if this is the only DLC they put out, then they've broken their promise of the most DLC that they've put out. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least if they want, unless they want to try to say no, no, look at all the gear we've put out and costumes and things. Um, but character wise, that would be a, a letdown. But yeah. there's also like several characters that were named in the leak that, like Shiva. Uh, there's a couple other characters like Ash was named in the leak. Uh, doesn't matter, but I don't know. Yeah, most. Mostly cool stuff, but the time frame bums me out. But I get it. Yeah, no, that's fair. I'm just impatient. All right, guys. Uh, I, I'm sorry for the uh, the overage on time. Hopefully, you still enjoyed the show. Uh, hopefully, you stuck with us. And we, uh, I mean, if you're listening, obviously, you stuck with us. And I thank you so much for doing so. We're going to head out of here. Uh, as per usual, tell a friend. We don't you know, pay for any kind of marketing on this. It's all word of mouth. So, yeah, uh, tell a friend. You know, tweet us out. Like, we've got... We've got Twitter. Asa over there has been uh, doing a pretty good job at, uh, you know, posting this stuff to our Twitter. Make sure it's there. So, you know, get go on there, retweet, uh, share, all that other stuff. Uh, in the meantime, though, you know, just enjoy your night. Have a good time.